Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. In this episode, I'm going to teach you a quick and easy process for repairing STL files. All right, let's get to it. Real quick, I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to Matthew Grove, Arthur Ornick, and David Thomas. Thank you so much for your support. You make it possible for me to continue making videos like this to help our awesome community. All right, so you've brought a model into your slicer, and then you get this pop-up window saying that there's something wrong with the model. This is what that looks like in Cura, and this is what it looks like in Lychee Slicer. All right, so what should you do if your slicer tells you that there's an issue with your file? You have a couple of different options. First up, you could try to slice the file and see if you can notice any issues in the preview. I wouldn't recommend this as it's both time consuming and also you could potentially miss the error or the, the preview might just not show you the error. In other words, the file might look like it's going to print fine and then you go to actually print it and find out that the error absolutely is causing issues and the file will not print correctly. So you could do it that way and depending on the issue that the file has, it might print fine, but it's pretty hit or miss so I wouldn't recommend that. Now, if your slicer has any kind of repair function, your next option would be to let your slicer try to repair the model. Again, in my opinion, this is hit or miss. Sometimes it repairs the model and it works fine. Other times it'll repair the model, but it will completely rip out the area that's an issue. And obviously that's really no better. So again, this is hit or miss and I typically don't use it in most slicers. Um, there are some slicers out there that will use a really great tool called the Netfab Repair Tool, but I believe that that tool is now bundled up into a pay-to-use software, so I think it's been pulled out of most slicers, unfortunately. Now, there is a third option, and it's what I absolutely recommend. It's using the repair function in a free third-party program called 3D Builder. And you can get that program by going to the search bar in the bottom left and just typing in Store. Then just click on the icon for the Microsoft Store. Then from there, go up to the search bar in the Microsoft Store app and type in 3D Builder, and then click on this icon. Now, I have the program installed, which is why it says open over here, but if you don't have it installed, it should say install in this blue box. Now, a quick side note, because this is a Microsoft program, I don't think it's compatible on Mac computers. However, I don't have one, so I can't test that. Um, if you are able to test it, or if you know of another program that works on Mac the same way that 3D Builder does on Windows, then feel free to put it in the comments down below, and I'll absolutely put it in the description. Um, I apologize that I don't have the ability to test programs on Macs. Um, maybe I'll try for that in the future, but for right now, I only have Windows systems. Then once you have 3D Builder installed, go ahead and start it up. From there, you'll be met with this window where you can load files. To do that, you're just going to go to Open, then go down to Load Object, and then find the file you want to bring in. Now, this is where you can preview the model. In order to fully load it in, go up to Import Model. And then once that's done, if 3D Builder finds anything wrong with the model, it'll highlight it with this red square, and it'll give you more or less the same message that your slicer did. From here, if you want 3D Builder to automatically repair your model, just click anywhere in this box. Now, just a heads up, depending on the size and the complexity of your model, this repair process can take a while. With some models, I've had it take up to an hour, so be sure to give it plenty of time to do its thing. And while you're waiting, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And then once 3D Builder is done repairing the model, you want to be sure to save it. And you do that by going up to the top left and hitting save or save as. Now real quick, save will overwrite the original file with this repaired version. So if you want to keep the original file for whatever reason, make sure you hit save as. And if you hit save as, you can choose what file type you want to save it in. Now, typically STL is going to be the most popular format that pretty much all slicers will recognize, but FreeMF is getting a little bit more popular now too. If you don't know the difference, then play it safe and just save it as an STL. Now, there's one more really important thing that I want to mention. For whatever reason, a lot of times when you bring in a pre-supported file into your slicer, it will look at those pre-supports and say that there's some kind of an issue with them. In my experience, there's usually nothing wrong with the file, it's just the slicer identifies something about the pre-supports as being an error. So if you repair it using this process, some of those pre-supports might be removed, and that's definitely going to cause issues with your model. And now here's the repaired version in Lychee Slicer, and here's Cura. You can see that we're no longer getting the error message, so we're all good to print. So I lied. There is one more note I want to make about this process. 
3D Builder should be able to resolve about 90% of the issues that you run into. If you run into something that 3D Builder can't resolve, the best thing you can do is reach out to the artist that created the file you're having an issue with and see if they can help you resolve it. And if you can't get in touch with the artist, then go ahead and post in my Facebook group. There's a few different 3D artists in that group, and one of them should be able to give you some information or at least point you in the right direction for how to resolve the issue you're seeing. And if you're curious about the model I was using, it is the Gothic Lantern by Shira. You can find a link to it in the description down below. And that's it. I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel and I really appreciate it. And if you like the work I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, you can find all my Patreon information down below. Alright, let's go print something.